So one of the things that can happen with metrics and we should really pay attention to. So if we think questions worth answering, usually we won't incur into this anti-pattern. But when we don't consider a question that is really relevant, we just go with the first question that seems to make sense, we can weaponize it. And some examples could be, what could be an example of weaponizing metrics? What could you do with those metrics and measures in a company that is so unhelpful? Overusing it, so having too many metrics. Ooh, that is a good one. That is a, a very, very good one. And actually, that brings us here. I call this hoarding. Thank you for that. That I call hoarding. And while it doesn't look like that in certain dashboards, it definitely looks hard to decipher. You you, you see so many things and more than 10 different things to look at. At some point, you just don't know what to do. You, you're actually paralyzed because if you move this one thing, you have to compare it with nine others. It doesn't really tell you much, but it gives the feeling that we could potentially improve. After all, we are measuring so much. But an example of weaponizing, I think we can we can relate to that one, which is comparing. Team A is delivering more than team B in whatever measure that is. Or, um, you know, do we really need to compare teams and people? Um, is it really... When we want to improve, do we want to improve in relation to one another or do we want to improve with relation to oneself? And that is really, really key, at least in the realm of agile metrics. I've seen that one a lot that is very disturbing for all levels of teams, including leadership teams. And then this one, have you seen this one around? Measures that makes us look good. Can you name one? Padding. Ah, <laughs> absolutely. And and the thing is, um, even if you go completely, I think everybody can understand that one. Like go on social media, yeah, in- Instagram, those things. Like a, a lot of people. I actually know someone who was, uh, you know, she's super happy and she's wondering what she's gonna do with the two hundred something thousand people that follow her on the fit- fitness world. She doesn't monetize any of that. She has two hundred thousand fans. It looks really good. But no money comes in from that, which is great if you just want to have a bunch of friends. But it's one example of, wow, the numbers suggest something that doesn't really reflect something else. So it's something to be very attentive because between weaponizing, making us look good, or just confusing the heck out of us, what can happen is always a response. And in the first two cases, just be aware, if you compare people, or if you just try to look good, what will people do? They will respond by gaming the system. All the other team delivers 60 story points, and I'm delivering only 40. From now on, my most basic story will be eight points. And now I'm delivering 100. It is fixed. So I just fixed something that needed no fixing in the first place. And, you know, when is it going to really stop? And the hoarding problem is very simple. is I'll, I'll get paralyzed. It's too much information. I'll, I'll trust that someone else will look at that data later. So it's really, really important that we consider that the, you know, why are these things anti-patterns? Because they don't really reveal anything. And it's so good, you know, we have that feeling that you are doing something, you are measuring something because you're collecting these data. But it really isn't true. So we need to pay attention that it's not because something is easy to collect, that it's useful. And it's not because something is hard to collect and measure that actually we shouldn't be doing that. So we really need to know how to ask better questions, better metrics, metrics that are actionable, metrics that are worth something are a question that is really valuable for us. And then we figure out interesting ways for us to answer today. And these ways of answering those questions will change tomorrow. 